Hi, welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you'll find an uncensored version of me. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and I'm here with my amazing girlfriend, Abigail, and our roommate slash her best friend, and my really good friend, Devin. Honestly, I'm offended. <laughs> Are you not my best? Like, we're not best friends. You, okay, but also. We're really good friends. But also? What? Nothing. No, that's okay. We're roommates and I'll we're never really forget this. I know. I'm but sorry, are you, you sad that I'm so, are you best sad? friend status? Yet. It's okay. I'm okay with that. But are you sad that I'm leaving? Extremely sad that you're leaving. Sounded sarcastic. Which is why I manipulated you into coming back. <laughs> and then you're coming back in three months and living with me again for three months. That's true. That, that is was my happening. idea. That is happening. What is happening over here? They're holding hands, which I'm is gonna, very normal. I'm really going to miss you. I think, <laughs> oh, I think you are the person that I least care about with her interactions. <laughs> Girl, I just leave you guys naked in a bed together, and I'd be like, "What's up? Were you hot?" <laughs> Let's just stop the sentence. At, You're oh the person God. I least care about. Cool. No, nah, it's all good. I'm fine. <laughs> no, I was gonna say threaten, but that seemed like too intense of a word. Okay, well, I appreciate like you're that. The, I question your guys' relationship, like yeah, negative Cause, percent. Because I'm so actually straight. concerned there is like zero sexual anything between you so straight like zero. i'm mad at you for not thinking she's zero i mean she's beautiful <laughs> are you mad she that is- i'm not attracted to her i kind of am <laughs> i feel like that's how i knew that Devin was straight straight because she had zero attraction towards me and that's how i knew <laughs> I that we became friends i'm like oh i love you you're my friend yeah that was that was a big indication you didn't, you didn't for hit me. on her no what? yeah i mean she gets hit on a lot yeah and i don't blame the people i love her don't for will. her i love her for her heart not her looks oh my god because you're uh, ugly. I love her for- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's oh, my God. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. We all know oh, that's my God. I also, love it. I yes. Say that. I'm sweating. <laughs> this started off so strong. There like, two it, it started off really chaotic. I feel like, are we recording? Zini, I don't even realize Zini that Jenkins, we're recording. Where are you going? Um, okay. So we are all here. It's the end of the day. Abby and I leave tomorrow for 18 days. And when we come back, Devin will no longer be here. So this is our last hurrah together. Zara's in the corner without a microphone sitting uh, on a plastic, no, on a metal you chair guys by herself. Say that's not her name. That's Should not we... her name. It's ZD Jenkins. Uh, I call her Zarzar Binks. Zarzar Binks. What about ZZ Top? Cricket. Cricket. Polly Pocket. I think maybe she should make a little cameo in the video. Zee Herman. Just come is over. Is ready? Come over. Come. You want to come, come say hi? Come. Come. You can now's just wait. Now's the time. time. wave to the camera. Come. Come hither. You can leave that. No, take it. Bring oh, she's it. She's just bring taking it. a drink. Did you put a toy on Here Snoop? she comes. Oh, dog of the day is Snoop. Sorry, this is going to be real chaotic. There's a lot of us and not a, and not enough microphones. Here we go. Here she, the sparkle is entering the room. Oh, Here my she goodness. Goes. You have to talk one inch from the microphone. <laughs> Yo. Her feet will not touch the ground. <laughs> and Hi. here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, Zara. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> It was the only color in this entire video is her pants. Oh my god! <laughs> You're right. Wait, hey guys. Question, Let's just color. Zara, what okay. are your pronouns? Ah, oh, thank you for asking. You're welcome. Okay, she, her. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. And You're what is your sexuality, if you don't mind me asking? Straight. All right. This thank is Zara, asking. everyone. Yes. Wave. <laughs> Wave to the camera. Thank she you. is the sparkle of our lives. That's I so think. sweet. I Truly. love you guys so much. She's I love Polly you guys Pocket. so much. I really Don't appreciate be being here tonight. Thank you so much. She put her sunglasses on. Um, this is this. Deb's going to come back and everything's going to be fine. This is kind of the last reunion for like a little while. So it's very, very special that we're all together. Wait, do you have a uh, like a little word of advice for us as we as we're about to leave for Ooh. two weeks and be away from you? Yeah, that is hard. I think I put to my say? sunglasses on because I'm already crying. <laughs> <laughs> I've already told you guys I hate when my friends leave. It's so sad. Like we have, we're so like we we're, we're so we live so close. This is like our little community. Like it's 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 like when everyone's home, I just feel like so comfortable. Like we're all down the street. But yeah, you guys are going on an amazing trip, amazing adventure. I think my advice would be. Let me think about it. She's thinking. Hold on. Mm-mm. You're all good. Don't diamond nickel. I will say <laughs> the past like week, I think you've been over here about five times in yep, the past week. Yep, that's how you know. I'm like, someone's leaving. She is very I upset that we're leaving. I have to spend every waking moment. No, yeah. I think honestly, like 
such a especially where you're going and like how far you're going to be and how long you're going we're just in a different time zone that's a lot exactly exactly and and but being there and like experiencing everything like experience how they live the culture all of it that's what i would say experience it experience it you're going to a different country different people different places different food all of it just like be within that all right there's my advice thank you zara and that was a touching moment from zara thank you love you cricket (laughs) love you all right Back to Devin, who I've nicknamed Bratwurst. Is <laughs> yeah, because she's a brat sometimes. <laughs> yeah. What? What? What did you say? No, she didn't say yeah, that. That up. makes so much hey, sense. Hey, wow, be comfortable. Um, what did you say to me? All right. So here we go. Stop talking to Zara. She doesn't have a microphone. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. What are we? What are we doing? What are We're we doing about? more. Am I the assholes? But this time, Emily picked them out. And she said they are truly like she wants to know our opinions because they could go either way. Whoa. Okay. I'm so excited. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So here we go. Here are my reading skills because usually I read these first so I know what they're going to say and so I can read them better. But I sometimes I'm going to we might have to edit this podcast a little bit so I can reread <laughs> things a few times. You can have us go like each do one. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I can't read at all. So I'll look way worse than you. Well, I was just going to give it to Abby. She's really good at reading out loud. Oh. Well, homeschooled kids. I might be jinxed what? now. I was homeschooled. Double homeschooled kids. I just okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the first one. Am I the asshole for begging my girlfriend to uphold a sexist tradition just, sh- just so she can make a good first impression? Okay. Go okay. On. okay. I'm following. None I'm of following. Us Wait, straight? Ins- hetero? Um, I don't know. I think okay. it sounds like a hetero man talking about his woman. All yeah. right. I have a big family that's incredibly close. We have big family dinners every few months where we all meet at my great grandfather's estate and eat together. Typically, this works. Sorry. Typically, how this works is that the women go cook and the men don't, which I am fully aware is sexist as hell. That being said, I am one of the youngest people in my family, and my protest means literally nothing. Well, just because, no, it does mean something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Correct. Some of the women choose not to cook. However, this is usually met with a high level of judgment and backlash. Wow, your family sounds toxic as hell, bro. Yeah. Or they have been part of the family for so long that they already have a good family relationship doctored in, so it doesn't matter. When I have seen new patterns... Nope. When I have seen new partners not cook, it's gone bad. Like completely ostracized, not speaking, cattiness, rudeness, etc. You shouldn't be bringing your girlfriend into this family. No, 100%. This is no, already, you should, you're already setting her up for failure. You should bow out. Yeah. Or be like, I'm going to come cook with you guys. I'm going to be right. in there. Like you changed it up. Just because you're the youngest doesn't mean that you can't do something about it. Yeah. All right. The dinner will be in two weeks and my girlfriend was asked if she would attend. Initially, she said, she said yes, which is great. I want her to meet everyone and for everyone to get used to her being around. But when I explained to her that the tradition was understandably, she was understandably bothered. Okay, so yeah, you said, yeah, you can come to this dinner, but you're going to be stuck in the kitchen the entire time and you won't see me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I told her that I understood where she was coming from. However, it was best for everyone if she just played along. I told her this isn't a permanent thing and that I'm only asking her to do this so she can avoid bad treatment from the rest of the family. This is her first impression and I don't think it's best if we cause waves. Yeah, this is your family's first impression on her too. You have to think about that. Mm Mm-hmm. She, this is how she's going to see them the rest of her relationship with you right all right she told me that it's unacceptable and that if she has to do that she is not going i've tried to find a compromise with her on this but she won't budge and she's pissed me off. she's pissed at me she told me that if i think it's acceptable to make her do this i'm just as bad as everyone else well my point is that she needs to make a good and first impression am i the asshole i think he is I think he's the asshole. Of course. I mean, that's so obvious that he is. Like, yeah. If you, like, if, if you came to me and you were like, I truly do not want to do this. Okay. Like, that's it. That's a boundary. Exactly. That's, that's the end of it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And yeah, like, if your family's being a little piece of shit, uh, yeah. <laughs> Come here. But if, like, I don't, if her family, if, I would just like if my family was giving my girlfriend shit for not being in the kitchen, I would just turn it around on them and give them shit and be like, she doesn't want to stop being sexist. 
Is yeah. there any other point in this? Yeah, no, I don't I don't feel like this is a very in-depth uh conversation. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe. You know, <laughs> something we, to say. Okay. <laughs> okay. We've got something to say. So for me, I understand that I <laughs> have internalized misogyny. But something else Whoa. that oh, she admitted it. I, I do, yes. Know. I admitted, I admitted it. But one thing that I also have that I really, really like to explore is my anthropological mindset. I like to put myself in situations that I normally wouldn't because and not because I'm like, oh, I have a boundary and I like absolutely don't want to do that. But I like to put myself in a situation where I feel uncomfortable. Like, for example, when I was at the airport picking up a friend, um, I was talking to a man who uh, was um, wearing clown makeup and had a rat tail, was completely bald, had a rat tail. Would I in normal situations talk to that man that was holding a sign? He was wearing a Satan shirt. Probably not. I would not engage in a conversation with him. But I need to know. Like, I need to know things. Okay. So in this situation, I wouldn't enter it as like, I am submitting to like this authority that I have to be this way. I would kind of approach it like I'm trying to learn about these people. Like, where do these ideas come from? Like, why do they feel like they have to do this? Like, I like to kind of search in this. I don't think about it as like I'm submitting to the man. I'm just like, this is a learning opportunity for me. Right. And I can help and I can be a part of it without saying this is who I am and this is how I'm going to act in our relationship. But I can say. I'm, you're like getting into it. You're like, okay, I'm putting myself in this situation so yeah, I can figure out what if someone told you that you, you had, had to, to talk to that's, the clown. That's the difference. As a woman, you had to go up to the man who looked like a clown and talk uh, to him. I see. I see. see. She's okay. Being forced into a scenario. Other like because of her gender role. It's the gender but, roles that we're talking about. Yeah. So the 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 difference between. I think I can make anything into a positive for me. Like even if somebody was like, you have to do this, I'd still have that same outlook and say, this is my decision to mm -hmm. have that outlook on it. But ultimately, the whole the whole situation is shitty. She shouldn't have to do that. But you can make that situation into a positive for like a learning experience. But well, her boyfriend is telling her that he, she, she has to, to do yeah, this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, that's what I'm saying. You can make it a positive for yourself. Yeah. But she can obviously say no and be like, I don't want to. There's well, no Well, yeah, she did say that. Me. And he's saying, no, you have to do it. Okay, well, I would say eat a bag of dicks <laughs> and get a new boyfriend. What he could have said is like, hey, my family's having this dinner. You're invited. Just so you know, like the girls usually go off to the kitchen and the dudes usually do this thing. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. You might get some like backlash for not going to the kitchen, but I'll stand up for you. Mm hmm. Um, but if you want to join them, that's cool. But that's obviously your decision and you don't have to go if this makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Like that, like tell her the situation and then give her the freedom the option, to choose yeah. Yeah. the three choices. Go in the kitchen, don't or not go. Yeah. And I like, mean, I mean, when, when I was in my last relationship, my ex, his mom loved to cook. Yeah. But I love, like I had started establishing a relationship with her and though she was like the matriarch in like those specific gender roles, like I just liked being around her like mm -hmm. she had really like she definitely had that like gender role type of thing where it's like the man does this and she does that but it doesn't mean that she's like a bad person no not at or, all and but also i guess the difference is is like there wasn't like a ex expectation that i did but it's like i just wanted to like yeah. i wanted yeah. to get to know her more yeah like, uh, but that's probably the people pleaser in me that i'm like i want everyone to like me well, so was, i'm gonna do whatever i'm told i was gonna say if he gave her those options and she's like okay i'll just go and like feel it out she probably would have ended up with all the women because yeah. that's how we kind of yeah. are we're like kind of navigate out. let's yeah. i want to talk to yeah. you like you yeah. know but to be like hey you're gonna meet my entire family and you're not allowed to hang out with me and you're only allowed to hang out with people you don't know like when you first meet someone's family you want to sit there and hold your partner's hand yeah and like they kind of help safe. guide you through it. I would have been so turned off by that conversation. Like yeah. if, if we would have had that conversation initially, I would have been like, especially at the age I'm at, maybe there's like, there should be context too. It's like, how oh, old are how they? Old are they? Like how long no. have they been dating? But like, and this is, this is what always happens with these types of, uh, am I the assholes? It's like, we're looking for more context. We're yeah. like, it, what happened here? Like, is it this? Is it that? Like wh how old were they? How long are they in a relationship? It's like, we don't know those things. We don't know those factors. But thinking about like we can only and I see this happen all the time. It's like we can only like uh, establish uh, a connection with what we've experienced ourselves. Yes. And it's 
for me, I'm like, if you would have told me that in the beginning of our relationship, even being 20, uh, you know, what, seven at the time or 26 at the time, no, I would have been, when I, met you? I would have been thrown we for that. About like, that. I, I would not have been happy about that. No, I would have absolutely said, I feel very uncomfortable with that. And I do not want to do that. No. Right? Yeah. But I'm tw- I would I'm 26 and I feel like I'm more mature. And maybe a 21 year old, 20 year old teenager might not. They would be like, oh, OK. Yeah. They wouldn't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. But I mean, he's being an asshole. He could have gone this about this in many different ways. And just as mature adults, you don't tell someone that they have to fulfill a certain role. Mm-hmm. You say this is this is you can tell them the scenario. Stop making faces at Zara. I'm sorry. I'm oh, so sorry. also, I'm sorry, he I'm did. Sorry, he sorry, did. Sorry, he sorry. did say in the title it said, "Am I the asshole for making my girlfriend do something?" What was it? Asking sexist, her about- uh, sexist. Yeah, he said he sexist. said sexist. So like, him- so he knew that so, it was sexist. Yeah, it, this is where I'm annoyed. Where it's like he knows it's bad, but he's like, "I can't do anything about it." Yes, you can. I have no you control. It's what my family does. Yeah, not put up with it. Yeah. And you can go in and you make a stink. I stand up for myself in a lot of scenarios where it's very uncomfortable, but I'm not going to just let it. I'm not going to let myself be walked all over. Mm -hmm. And it's not fun, but that's what it is. Yeah. But interesting question. If you if you accept a behavior from your family, but you do not act on that behavior by yourself, what is what does that mean? That means you're a grown adult dealing with your family. Yeah. So he is acting on it. By my by making by her making do something. her do it yeah 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 okay, he would okay. not be acting on it if he brought his girlfriend and and they said come to the kitchen she's like oh, I'm not I don't I really actually hate cooking they're like no you have to come to the kitchen you're a woman but he do would then really be like think- hey she's sitting next to me and she can do what she wants but but in a real real situation do we actually think okay so we're talking about like when like the parent the mom the grandma the aunt whatever we're talking about them in this situation and they're like hey Genevieve. That's the name I came up with. Can you can you come over here? Do you want to like cook with us? And she's like, no, I'm actually going to hang out with Robert. And they're, if, if they are in their gender roles as women, they're not going to be like, bitch, get up well, and he help said, us. They've said he said that people women who have decided not to go into the kitchen have been ostracized. Yeah, but ostracized in private because women, unfortunately, um, they, they've been given the silent treatment, cadness yes. and rudeness. Yeah, but that's like that's like quintessential like gender role type behavior because women in the gender roles are not supposed to be loud and uh, like abrasive. They're just like, oh, did you see that Genevieve like didn't cook us dinner? Like, oh, what does she think? She's better than us. Like, blah, 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 blah. That's all like their problem. Like that's the the women who are working in the kitchen. They're obviously like resentful that they have to be in the kitchen yeah, so and do sh- all of it. So they should break the whole cycle. Yeah, but it's so hard to. And I'm I'm mostly playing devil's advocate right now. I'm not like, you know me, like I don't want to be in the kitchen. I don't want to cook. You see me with my fucking meals and I'm just like, okay, put those in the microwave for two minutes. And I'm like, hee hee, I don't have to cook for anybody. But it's like you see where I'm where I'm going with what I'm saying. I actually don't. <laughs> Because I'm like, saying for him, she, honestly, Genevieve, we've decided their names are Robert and Genevieve. Genevieve shouldn't have to say, yeah, if someone, if I was Robert and Genevieve was sitting next to me, like, Genevieve, come to the kitchen. I, as Robert, would be like, oh, no, actually, I wanted her here for this story. I would interrupt it and shut it down so she didn't even have to say no. So yes. I would put it on me if it was my family. But that's a, but that's a hypothetical. Like, Correct. That's, so, so is yours. No. <laughs> They're all we're all talking about every every scenario that we play here is a hypothetical because the situation hasn't happened yet and we don't know what happened. So they well, said so, this so is based how on they're the, gonna act. Based on the information we've given, we've been given, what would your opinion be? Based on the information given Robert says he wants her to go to the kitchen. Genevieve says, I don't want to go to the kitchen. Mm, well it's different. And he's it's- saying, if you want to go to this dinner, you have to go to the kitchen. Is he an asshole? Yes, he's an asshole. Okay. I'm not saying what I would do. No, because you're saying is he an <laughs> asshole? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, he is an asshole. I will say that. Yes. And that's the end. All right, next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm in, a, I'm in an argumentative mood, so I'm just going to play devil's advocate and be like I unbiased will. on a lot of stuff. That... <laughs> It kind of sounds like the straight guy in every classroom. Me? Yes. Yeah. Where it's like, 
Just to play devil's advocate real quick. Just, <sighs> uh, real quick, Mrs. Smith, uh, I just, like, I want to play devil's advocate real quick. Like, but what if you, like, looked at it from the man's point of view? <laughs> Don't look at me like that, that. Rose. <laughs> you know what? Zara, would you like to be a part of this? <laughs> Zara, would you like to come Zara, in? Zara, do you have anything to say? Zara, would you like to... Would Zara would go... Your would input, just cook please. the entire dinner herself and then clean up for everyone and then go mow the grass somehow. Uh, All right. Mow the grass. <laughs> and then send a thank you note for hosting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she said she would, do, the thank she you would do all the things She'd in the correct everything. way. Absolutely. Come here. Wait, you can't... I, they literally cannot hear you unless she it's microphone She needs to say face. something. I was just going to say, I would cook the whole dinner and then um i would be the only one to eat it like they're making (laughs) (laughs) they're making me sound like i would do all the right things but no not no that's not gonna work for me i would definitely clean up because i know no one else coming over to my house is probably gonna clean up so i would do the cleanup i'll do the cooking but no one else would get fed so all right thank you she would do what she was supposed to for the throw in pettiness (laughs) except for scooter scooter gets to eat and that's it would eat his tuna all right here's a new one Am I the asshole for telling my friend that her baby's name is ridiculous? Probably, yes. No. Unless it's, if it's already born. All right, let's, let's hear that. Right. Let's hear the All story. Right. My friend recently had a baby and she named him hashtag. How do you spell that? Like <laughs> hashtag. No. H-A-S-H-T-A-G. Hashtag. Okay. All right. Yes. You read that right. She named her child after a social media symbol. When she first told me the name, I thought she was joking, but she was dead serious, and I couldn't believe it. I tried to be polite and tell her that was unique, but she kept insisting that it was a great name and that her child would be one of a kind. I just couldn't hold it in any longer, and I finally told her that the name was ridiculous and that her child would likely face a lot of ridicule and bullying in the future. She got upset and accused me of not being supportive of her choices. Now, our mutual friends are split on the issue. Some agree with me that the name is absurd, while others agree that I was too harsh and should have kept my opinions to myself. So am I the asshole for telling my friend that her baby's name is ridiculous, or should I have kept that opinion to myself? What did, what did she say again? What did she say when she finally, like, She said, said um, I told her the name was ridiculous and that her child would likely face a lot of ridicule and bullying in the future. So okay. Devin ran away. That, that's fine. We can do this without her. Babe, what do you think? <laughs> I, well, I wanted to go back to, I wanted to be certain about what her friend said to her. Yeah. It was ridiculous and the child will face ridicule and bullying. I don't think that she's wrong. Yes. If she, and it depends on how she said, like, how do you say, how do you tell your best friend that their baby's name is ridiculous? That like the, the context, the tone would, would play a big part. Um, but also I think she was being valid in, in like explaining that it might, this baby might face a lot of ridicule. I think that's, she wasn't saying anything out of like mal intent or like no. malice or like, um, ill intent, ill intent. Yeah. I think it was, it, it was very like, uh, valid warranted in a yeah. way. It's like, I'm looking out for your future child. Yes. I, I say when the baby names are being thrown around, that's when it's okay if it is absurd like that. But if the baby's already born and that name's on the birth certificate, you keep your mouth shut. Right. That's yeah, where at I that lie point on that. At, the, at that point, it's a little too yeah. late. But I mean, maybe call... Are you okay over there, Devin? Sorry. <laughs> I got you. Thank you. There you go. Um, Maybe call it Tag for short. Tag is cute. I actually know I know someone who's named Tag. Yeah. So yeah. like maybe Tag, but I would agree that hashtag... You're just setting like names like that. You're just kind of setting your kid up to. Yeah, I would be like, curious what be the reason on. was. Like what to be unique. That she was said, it. That's literally she, it. Yeah, it would be one of a kind and unique. You could be, but like why hashtag? It could be. There's so many other names that could be unique. That could be like cool sounding. Like the names. reason, like she picked that specifically. I would be curious as to why. I don't know, but I would say if the baby's already born, you're an asshole. If it's not born yet, I think that's valid for kind of looking out for him. Yeah. I think that's fair. What's up, Devin? Okay, so I have something to say. So I recently had a therapy session where I talked to my therapist about saying something to somebody and is it worth it? And what it came down to is 
are the consequences worth the justice of being right what did you want to tell us that your therapist told you not to tell uh, us it's not about you okay um <laughs> so oh it's about me it's not about you um no so it's really you have to weigh the consequences like you have to before you have that conversation with somebody you have to understand that you might say something hurtful to somebody even though it's your truth yeah. and to them like it might be really hurtful and you just have to say hey like I'm going to accept whatever their response is. You might lose a friend over saying something that is hurtful to them, but that's a decision you're making by telling them that comment. So yeah, sometimes I preface things like if I'm, I know I should say it, but I'm like, I know there might be consequences. I go, I'm just going to say this once. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to go through with it, I will support you, but I'm going to give my opinion once. And it's totally okay if you don't agree with me and I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings on this, but, and then I'll say the thing like, don't marry him. Mm-hmm. Break up with him. Don't name your child that. <laughs> don't get a dog. <laughs> don't get a dog. <laughs> like, I'll say those things once and then I'll be like. Were there personal experiences in each of those? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you talking to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I've definitely told a few people not to marry the person. <laughs> oh, no. And I was right. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, I'll, I'll preface it being like, I'll say this once. I don't want to offend you. I'm just looking out for you. Yeah. And if you don't agree, like, I'm sorry, I hurt your feelings and I will completely support you after this. And then I never say anything else again. Okay. And I think that's how a lot of it is. But also, the baby's already could, named. You, could, you know what you could also do is like in that moment with that best friend, be like, do you want my honest opinion? You can, all, you can yes. also offer that up. Like, because it sounds like she's saying her best friend was like so excited. She kept going on about it. She was like, kept saying like this and this and this. And then you could, you could feel so like, okay. I can no longer just be like, yeah, great. And be like, do you want my honest opinion? They can say yes or no. Yeah. Based on what they do in that situation. Yes would mean, okay, this is how I really feel. If they say no, they'd be like, okay, then I won't tell you my opinion. But they already know then. Yeah. It's, 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 it's oppo- opposite of what they're feeling. Wait, I just had another thought. Or somebody, I'm not going to name names because it's one of the two people I'm sitting here right now, can name their dog something that you don't like. So then the first day they bring that dog to you, you name them something you do like, and then you just continue to call okay, that dog. Okay, clearly her because I already named my dogs before you You just do. continue to call the dog the thing that you like, and then the person who gets the dog just starts calling the dog that. And so then you rename it becomes, the child. I re- you so give it a nickname. Re- yeah, you just give it a nickname. So and then, if, if you name your child or dog hashtag, you can just... Make up call another Bob. It's own name, yeah. <laughs> you just call it Taggy. You can call it H. Taggy. H yeah. for short. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of keep it in the family. Like you have to like, originally mm-hmm. call it like the f- name originally for like a few times. No. So it's not too obvious. Oh, first you- day. First day. What right? About, I actually don't know what you're talking about. What? Her middle name. What? Oh, yeah. What about it? I called she, her that the first day I saw because her. Because she didn't like and her first name. And then I continue name. to call oh, her that. Oh, you're saying how I named. Oh. Are, I was totally. Uh, wait, does she think I'm talking about Snooper Blaze? No, <laughs> I was. I thought maybe we were talking about uh, some, yeah, something else. Honestly, I thought we were talking about something else. Oh, okay. Bondo? No. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, fine. Yes. No, make make a dad read it. Okay. Oh, okay. You dad, you read. She's Let's hear how good your reading for skills are. For a while, are. she read to me books while I fell asleep, and it was really nice. I love. That. Okay. She's got a good soothing. Do voice. I read? Do I read like the yellow the part? highlighted thing? Yeah, you yeah, read that. Okay. That's the title. I might get comfy too. Okay. Am I the asshole for doing weird slash awkward poses whenever my mother-in-law accidentally walks in on me in the bathroom? <laughs> no. That is... Okay. Move out. Your okay. mother-in-law is a fucking asshole for walking we, in on you in the bathroom. Do they have a lock working? on the bathroom? I have we a lot of questions. We know from experience not to judge a story by the, the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, okay, yes, okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes, 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 yes. so <laughs> let, me, let me begin. Sorry, babe. So my M-I-L, which means mother-in-law. Yes. She, okay, in in a uh, parentheses, I'm a gal, by the way, lol. Close parentheses. Okay, came to stay with us for a few weeks till her home is renovated for Christmas. The problem is that she has been randomly walking in on me while I'm in the bathroom. Thankfully, she's gay. <laughs> she doesn't know how to knock. I think she has no boundaries. Thankfully, not once has she seen me naked because I started picking up on her behavior after the second time in a week. She barges in, then turns and says, oh, sorry, 
then closes the door. I tried talking to my husband about it, but he kept ignoring me, then flat out said, so what if she accidentally saw you naked? She's family. He seriously said that. Okay. Show her your badge. Keep going. I'm so angry. We have a lock and I could have used it, but I have a past trauma from the idea of locking slash being locked in a room after my brother locked me in the bathroom when I was five. Okay. So I came up with this idea. I'd go inside the bathroom pretending to use it and wait for her to come uh, cause honestly, wait. Five, six, seven, eight. Because honestly, it's deliberate at this point. Yeah. She has it. It's like she's coming in deliberately. Right. When she accidentally barges in, she'd seen me and she'd see me in an awkward slash weird position. That's really funny. For example, doing a ballet pose, standing on the toilet or standing facing the wall with my hands up, <laughs> fully clothed, of course. This is I, I'm sorry. This is hilarious. <laughs> and I support you a thousand percent. The mother in law is weird. I could see how awkward and weird this would be for her because she'd stand there for a few seconds trying to figure out what I was doing. It was hilarious at first seeing her initial confusion, but she told my husband about it, claiming she's caught me practicing rituals in the bathroom. <gasps> yeah, see, the, mo- the mother-in-law didn't trust her. She was trying to catch her doing something wrong. She was like trying to like see a tattoo or something. Yeah, a tattoo. Her nipples are pierced. She's yeah. like, oh, you can't be with her. Okay, uh, I cleared things up and revealed the reason why. My husband was livid. He called me childish, childish and said that I made his mom feel terrified slash weirded out by my behavior he said i should have acted maturely and locked the damn door instead of playing mind games am i the asshole N- no <laughs> i don't think so at all this is so it was, funny lock like, the door she clearly realized that the mother-in-law was doing it deliberately so she mm. was just like whatever if you want to see something i'll g- if you want a show i'll sh- i'll give you a show is what she said yeah right so the mother-in-law should have just learned to knock the door's closed knock what do you think i think that after the first time it should have been a conversation or no sorry no first time that's an accident second time it happens say hey if you see the door closed and the light is on can you just knock before you go in and the and that should have been the end of it and then if she didn't knock it's like okay then i'm sorry about your childhood trauma it's like you got to do immersion therapy and just like lock the door and like go through that on your own and lock the door so you can have privacy because what do you gain by just having her continually walk in like i caught you now what it was hilarious i will say this is her home it's not her mother-in-law's home yeah wait what was the circumstance so so the mother-in-law is staying with her that's the beginning Until of the Christmas, because yeah. mother in law is getting her home reno- renovated. Oh, okay. so, so mother in law came home. to stay she with us for a few weeks till her oh, home is renovated. I she, I this is so her staying. house. She does not have to lock that door. You should have been full, like, like waiting. That, it, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Open the door. Devin is in a very weird position at the moment. Open it. <laughs> But I was, it, it's her home. She shouldn't, if she doesn't like to lock the door, she shouldn't have to lock If she's in the mother in law's home, she that i would say well that's her house lock the door but it's her own home so i'm gonna say if this is how she wanted to handle it like it's petty but like the mother-in-law is being weird well it's not petty because she's she's expressed her feelings yeah to and her so husband, she probably but not husband. to the mother-in-law well it well, might be one of those weird things where like she just doesn't like i would get it's it weird it's, it's weird, weird. I how, would, I, how would i explain to the woman that kept walking into into the bathroom when i was in there like to not do that maybe they're not very close obviously it's a mother-in-law that you're not like super close to that person probably yeah initially and so it's like you talk to your husband or your partner about that like can you mention to your mom to like hey like these are kind of the rules for the house like don't walk in on the the bathroom like these these situations are tricky because i could see the woman going up to the mother-in-law and be like hey can you please knock then the mother-in-law going up to her son and being like you're your wife got mad at me and mm. blah, blah, blah. And him going up to his wife and be like, babe, you should have told me first. You should have gone through me and I would have handled it. Like those scenarios mm. happen a lot. Mm-hmm. I think it actually is safe depending on the situation where it is normal to go up to your significant other and be like, hey, can you deal with your family? I think that's very normal. So like that she tried to do that. Like go up and be like, hey, can you deal with your mom? And he was like, basically, fuck you. And that was the end of it. So she's like, well, fine, I'll handle it myself then. <laughs> okay so this i'm gonna goes, twerk on the wall and stand on the toilet i love what she did i think it's hilarious I yeah think it's, it's perfect because ultimately the mother-in-law didn't get what she wanted whatever she was trying to do it just back it just backfired yeah right she walked in and instead of 
surprising. I don't know what she was trying to do, but she was like trying to like surprise the daughter-in-law. It turned out that like it made her feel uncomfortable. Yeah. She's trying to make the daughter-in-law feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And it turned out that she was subjected to like something that she was uncomfortable with, which is like, yeah. 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 You opened a door to a bathroom and you were uncomfortable with what you saw. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows to knock before entering. Our, sometimes people just like come out of our guest bath and close the door behind them. And every time someone goes up to it and it's closed, they go, oh, is someone in here? Like the light is off. And they're like, I, hello? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's empty. And then they'll go in. Like <laughs> everyone's hesitant to go into a bathroom. I'm talking about Zara. Yes. Um, everyone's hesitant to go to the bathroom with the door closed. Um, I've walked in on Joy and Emily separately. Well, obviously not together. Okay. Separately in the bathroom with the light on. Because the door was not locked. And what else I was going to say. Okay, Devin, I think you need to learn how to knock. That's my bathroom. <laughs> it's the guest bath. It's my bath. You? I own it. I actually? I that was part of the rent. deal? No, I'm just kidding. Barely. <laughs> Barely. Okay, I have subsidized rent. Um, wait, no, sorry. What were you going to say? I don't know. That was the end of it. Okay. But um, <laughs> what I, what I was going to say though, is that this brings me back to the first podcast we ever did where my brain immediately goes to, oh, this mother-in-law has Alzheimer's, obviously. <laughs> obviously she has Alzheimer's. I give everyone the benefit of the I doubt. I don't like, think she, that that's the thing, but how that's old fine. is she? We don't know. I just feel like that's your internalized misogyny. <laughs> And it's that, a woman. It's a woman and walking that, in on a We're going to close out the podcast. No, we're going to no. check to see if we have a sponsor for today as I change the battery. <laughs> we'll be right back. Sponsor, sponsor. Skims. Skims is our sponsor for today. Now, normally I'm a sports bra kind of gal, but lately I've been alternating with my Skims bras that they sent me, and I absolutely love them. They're the only other bra I wear other than sports bras, and I can't get enough of them. They are silky smooth, buttery, soft to the touch. I truly cannot complain about them at all. And Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for every single body. I have tried their crossover bralettes, their racer back bralettes, their dipped front thongs, their waist high thongs. I like them all. And the Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. It's available in sizes XXS to 4X. Believe the hype, Skims has over 90,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims fits everybody and more best-selling essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75, all at skims.com. After you place your first order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. Let them know we sent you and get that silky, smooth, buttery fabric on your body. And we're back. All right. Devin wants to read the next one. Do you know my code? She doesn't. No, that's Abby's. Okay. There you go. All right. Scroll down and read the next one. This one? Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, okay. It might be actually this one. I don't know what she read. Oh, no. No, that's no, no. It. Okay, go. Okay. Am I the asshole for refusing to help to pay for my mother's fu funeral? A bit of context. Please. My, <laughs> my father... <laughs> Okay, this is going well thus far. My father, <laughs> my father passed a couple years ago, and long story short, it cost me individually thirty or three thousand euros. Okay, nobody who why. Um, anyways, <laughs> I mean other countries. <laughs> can someone can someone do the conversion for me? I don't know what three thousand euros is. That I mean, depending on what year it was, but it's roughly about the same. Okay, yeah, it's about the same. Okay, um, he had things planned, but unfortunately. Uh, he deal with the wrong people and basically nothing was paid for. That's how it was written. Okay. Um, okay. When it happened, I told my mom uh, <laughs> she needs to get things in order as it will be unfair on her children. She was no a notorious procrastinator and her house was literally falling apart around her as she failed time and time again to get things sorted. Can people understand me? This is how I read. Uh, despite I think great. I'm keeping up. Yeah, we're, fall we're falling. Despite constant nagging and promising to get it done, she didn't. She didn't, and has now passed. We wanted to. She wanted to be buried in a casket, and the burial plot alone was six k euros. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that not including the funeral service fees, wake, etc. 
there there's three siblings and only myself and another capable of funding any of it. <sighs> I've said we just do the cheapest cremation option or natural burial, but the brothers are insisting on giving mum what she wanted. Sorry, mum is spelled M-U-M, so that's why I'm saying it like that. Okay. Um, insisting on giving the mum what she wanted and burying her in a casket in a typical in a typical uh, cemetery. This is not written well. <laughs> Um, I flat out refused and put any meaning I flat out refused and put any meaningful amount sorted because as far as I'm concerned, she was told to get it sorted, seeing the issue we had with dad was and wasn't so old, sixty seven, that her mental state was compromised. She was just a procrastinator. So so they're saying like her mental state wasn't compromise she just was a procrastinator because she yeah. was 67 but now and, how she's all has all these demands yeah, yeah yeah so i'm out of the asshole for refusing to pay for a funeral and then there's an update from op uh forgot to mention that there is no inheritance for anyone how dare she um nothing si significant as she doesn't own her home okay well he's saying like i'm not just like taking money from her and not using it yeah yes oh, sorry yeah, it's okay i don't know um, where it was she's exited out but it's fine um not nah, cremate the bitch yeah i don't think you're an asshole she's dead if you can't afford it or it would like hurt you <laughs> god Canceled. damn it devin <laughs> canceled canceled you're dead you can't oh you can't disappoint your parents if they're dead i'm sorry i'll say I it mean, okay <laughs> you can give someone their final wish but if it's nah if their final wishes are like super like hey i want you to pay all of this money to do something and like you're just like it's up to him if he wants to do that or not who's got 6k just sitting being like hey <laughs> just because that's what she wanted she's dead now she's not gonna know if we gave it to her or not i do think it's a little annoying that the brothers like if they want to do that yeah that's on yeah, them I, th if, I feel like they should they if, should be the ones that yeah pull through for that yeah like if my parents passed and my siblings were all like yeah we want to do this thing and i was like uh, i don't want to then that's on them if they want to keep doing it mm -hmm. right like they can go do that on their own or if i was like i really wanted to do this thing and my all my siblings were like nah if i wanted to do it i would do it mm -hmm. and that's that was that's my decision that's their decision so like the fact that he has his two brothers that want to do it then that's cool they can do it if they want to yeah but and he can say like this is what i want to do and this would be my portion of it i will give you guys that money mm -hmm. like one third of the cremation so here's my sixty dollars <laughs> i'm like my sixty dollars euros sorry 60 euros yeah, euros be um, very specific so like he can do that but i don't think he's the asshole like i don't know why it's get all getting put on him when and like especially since he tried really hard to tell his mom like hey can you get this on order so it's not a big deal like it's less stressful for us which i think is respectful of parents to do is to have everything planned out and ready and arrangements made so your grieving children don't have to do it yeah i think that's a really big thing that parents don't do and they should and also it depends on what um religious denomination she was like if she was jewish and it was like completely against like their religion to mm. be cremated and it was like i'm not gonna okay again i was a religion major in college and i don't even know if this is true but if it was completely against the religion and you weren't gonna go to jewish heaven which oh God, i don't know <laughs> if you're not gonna go to jewish heaven if you get cremated which you can also cut this part. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I not talk about religion? No, no you can't, but just Jewish heaven. I don't know. Heaven. They're all different. You you're, go to Christian heaven, you go to a cult you're heaven. Like, I, I studied religion to, in to the college. Jewish I have a degree. I have a degree in religion and I don't have a right degree. This is your sign not to go to fucking college. Sure. This is your sign to not go to fucking college because even <laughs> people that study their own shit don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. Um I'm Jewish, uh, she just wait, said. There, okay, correct me then. Is there not a Jewish heaven? Well, that's just heaven no. to them. <laughs> well, Abrahamic religions, do they all go to the same? So do Muslims, Christians, and Did uh, you say Jewish? Muslim heaven and Christian heaven? I, and, Christ and Catholic they heaven? They all view heaven differently. <laughs> so are they different heavens? I don't know. I've never been. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a good question. Thank you, okay. Zara. Maybe something you should have asked your professor like five years ago. Okay. Well, I grew up secular, so what do you fucking want from me? Nobody taught me anything. I had to go At to school. At least she did try and learn. I, try, I tried <laughs> to learn. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> trying to learn. Okay. I'm dead. Anyway. So in the Jewish culture, if you're cremated, you won't go to heaven. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm assuming because you're supposed to be you're supposed to be buried in a Jewish cemetery. Got yes. it. Okay. Yes. 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 That yes. is yes. true. Oh, is it true? Thank you for yes. backing me up on that. I was not sure about the Jewish Bitch. heaven part. I wasn't going to back you up on that. <laughs> so I was just being quiet in that moment and letting you ramble. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well thoughts. Next, <laughs> next story then. <laughs> Wait, no, Dad, you didn't give your opinion. Emily's gonna have so much to do. And She's this- gonna hate us for the different levels of us screaming versus whispering. I know. Hi, Emily. Emily, can everyone say one thing they love about Emily? Emily, I Devin love everything start. about you. Actually, there's line. nothing I don't like no, about you. No, you gotta say one particular thing. Nope. Because when you just tell I someone like, pick- "Oh, you're the best," that doesn't hit right as much as if you're like, "I truly love this one aspect." Emily, of you. I love how physically attractive you are oh see that was pr- okay then is that one specific thing yeah that's one specific thing you i love how much she it. makes my girlfriend laugh <gasps> oh that's a good one that's what zara was gonna say how everyone loves how much you make me laugh emily <laughs> i love i love emily five six seven eight that's or a good no, one. no no second second thing hello <laughs> question always question okay just for him what is it so Zara funny. says she loves how hilarious you are. And you are one of her Whoa. most favorite human beings. Um, Damn, that's a couple from, from Zara. Wow. wow. Holy shit. There it is. Wow. Um, Anyways. Okay. <laughs> Great. Am I the asshole for taking a nap at work during lunch hours? So for context, I, a 29-year-old male, work in an office from 9 to 6, Monday through Friday, with a lunch break from 12 to 1.30. I've been working at this company for three years. However, I've just moved to a different department on a different floor, a.k.a. colleagues management that I'm not close to yet. Ever since we came back to office post-COVID, I've been taking naps during a lunch break to re-energize. I will usually put my head down on my desk and set an alarm on my phone so that it'll wake me at 1.30 p.m. when my lunch break ends. I will eat my lunch for the first half hour and nap the remaining hour. In my previous department, no one cared that I did this almost every day. I've been in this new department for about three weeks, and midway into the second week, I had an exchange with a colleague, a 40-year-old male, of mine in the break room. He basically told me that I shouldn't sleep during lunch as it's unprofessional and looks bad to clients. I was caught off guard and apologized, but replied that our clients don't come around to our office and that it's a lunch break, so why does it matter what I do? He gave me an unhappy look and then said, never mind. However, since then, I've heard him telling other colleagues how unprofessional I am and how sleeping at the office is not productive and encouraged others and encourages others to slack off. I confronted him about this and he just said he'll let upper management know and then I can explain myself directly to them. I have not heard from management yet, but I don't believe that I'm in the wrong. I don't think he's in the wrong. What's what's the uh, I'm going to raise my hand for a second. What's What's the uh, male version of a Karen? (laughs) Uh, A Robert, a Bob. It's like a A, Ken or a a Ken. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. A thousand percent. I rest my case. <laughs> As an employer, absolutely sleep during your lunch break. Do whatever you want yeah. during your lunch break. You are not paid during that time. That is an hour of unpaid time. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Is, yeah. Like you're not doing anything illegal on pro- pop- yeah, uh, company okay, property. Okay, let also, me be clear. huge indication yeah. of like the fact that this man was in the wrong is when he confronted the person the op and said hey you shouldn't be doing this it's um this or that and he responded with how he felt like well oh i'm i I apologize um but you know clients aren't ever really around his response was never mind that to me is a huge indication that like he's just being difficult yeah Yeah. he has no defense he he didn't didn't expect op to respond in in such a logical way so he had nothing else to go on after that because he was just acting on impulse and, and like emotion. Yeah. In his own emotions. Because there's no logic yeah. behind his thinking. It's yeah. just he's a grumpy old person. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because he's that's just it. like, hey, I, that's not what we've been back in my day. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, I, I don't feel like I can do that. So I don't feel like maybe you could be able to do that. Also, an hour and a half lunch break. Where do you work? Also, yeah. Wait, can it's an I hour get and a half? half? He an said hour. it was 12 to one uh, thirty, and he would eat for the first half hour and oh. then take a nap for the last hour. Okay, but first of all, let's talk about sleep cycles. Uh, an hour sleep cycle is too much. You need to sleep for 20 minutes yeah. or that's too long. There's no way you're waking up from your hour nap 
and feeling rested. No, I love it. I love a 20 minute cat nap. That's what I'm saying. 20 minutes, all you need. Yep. It's it's true. That's how it works for sure. Uh, definitely that we're all in agreement is not an asshole for this. No, but no, not an asshole. Can we just say that we know the generations? Like, I know the OP is a millennial, and then I totally know boomer. that the boomer or Fucking Gen smells X. smells like a boomer. Gen X. Well, or Gen in X. the 40s, yeah. Gen X, yeah. Oh, no one Gen talks X, about yeah. Gen X. Because there are some... So what's hard is to differentiate between Gen X and millennials because some people that like seem like they would be Gen X are millennials. Mm. Yeah, it's like a weird little it's hiccup like it's area. like eighty it's like eighty seven is like the cutoff for millennial. Yeah. Which to us it's like it should be in the nineties, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I not. guess. It's not. It's like the it's like eighty. I'm just thinking something. about my siblings. That means they're all Gen X and I'm the only millennial. No, millennial no, no. the cutoff for millennial is like eighty seven. Oh, so what are we? No Millennial. No. Sorry. No. Oh, sorry. So I'm saying all, millennial. I'm, my my siblings were all born before 86 and before and i'm the only one born after 86 right Wait, look it but, up so but i'm but the only millennial i'm saying uh the the like the start point for millennial is late like earlier than we think oh it's like yeah. 87 or 86 well i didn't even realize that my my siblings were gen x that's what i'm saying I thought they were millennials. Well, maybe let's 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 look because okay, it, it so is older than you think it is. So Gen X is 1965 through 1980. Okay, so millennials you, are. So let's do millennials. So millennials so are 1980. 80, yeah. 1980. Oh, so we're all. We, yeah, we all are millennials. There That's what go. I'm saying. No, you said that it wasn't. You said Wait. that they were at the cutoff was 86. So 81. So. 81. Oh, wait. OK, so. 1981 through 1996 is millennial millennial 81 oh i thought so it was 81. like 86 no 81 do no, you know anyone I was like, i'm pretty sure me and all my siblings are millennials okay. who's born after 96 how old are you if you're born after 96 20 <sighs> how old are you 27 mm-hmm. they'd be like 27 right now yeah so gen, gen z is or 27 <gasps> they're down 27? years old gen z gen z is 27 down until it's like what generation alpha or something like that oh, there's already know. a new one there's already a new one what they're like well yeah so it's small. been 27 years there has to be yeah, a new one by now true. okay so yeah establishing this and this is why you show just, your work during math class just so you know <laughs> if you were born what 1981 and on you're a millennial unless Cute. you're gen- like generation alpha or something like that I, what is it 1981 to what's the newest generation called they're babies right now they're toddlers i don't know my nieces and nephews what are they i like alpha i wish i was a part of generation because they had to start over again because it went to gen z so it has to start back the alphabet what's what how do we go from gen x to there's there's it's not it's not alphabetical so generation alpha is 2010 to 2024 so 14 years old and younger is generation alpha wait but what happened to wait so then what's gen z so gen z must be to 2009 yeah mm-hmm. so it's i think it's is it 2010 no, so, so it's every like 15 years it switches 14 years how many ge- yes. what's a generation De- that's a century that's a century just sorry a generation was, of, a generation was a century. yeah from like from 18 years is a generation years a generation that, a generation that is raised from a certain age and is like now adults from one to 18 that's what i thought a generation was i thought it was like 20 years or something like that okay yeah 2018 yeah something like that so it's basically 1996 through the mid 2000s doesn't give me an actual year um is gen z maybe it, they like just say like oh a massive social shift happened in this year so it's that's the new generation Go, you have to come into the microphone, Zara, if you want to say something. Or I'll just repeat everything you say. Go. Gen Alpha is the first generation to grow up in an entirely digital world. See, that's the thing about, gen, wow. uh, about millennials is that we grew up. We're the without, best generation, by the way. Uh, without a lot of technology. And then our formative, like our teenage years is when we got it. So we grew up without, like we grew up with pen pals and then got AIM. And so like we grew up in both worlds millennials had a taste of it but not really and they had more technology but it wasn't good and now alpha yes sorry sorry gen z had a little bit but it wasn't good and now alpha has like ai writing their fucking papers (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah aim was not good aim 
AIM was not good for me as a child. AIM was the best thing for me. You just I sit there hoping it. your friends would come online. I loved it so much. Oh. <laughs> you have very different experiences with AIM. Yeah, no, I, I found myself in chat rooms with old men. Remember, I, didn't I tell you this? That's why I got on the fence. That's why. That's how I got on the fence. Oh, that's Remember, right. You did. I was in a, a. Yeah, I was talking to somebody who was pretending to be, um, like sixteen, and I was like twelve. Why and, did you get in trouble for that? Um, because it's obviously my fault. It's how 12. dare I talk to people? No, but how did how did you find out that they were not the age that they were saying they were? Um, and how did your parents find out about that? Because they were because they were messi- messaging me sexually. And my parents went and logged on our family computer and it opened like if you restart a computer, it'll log you in on AIM. And then like somebody was on there and they were like, hey, what's up? Like <laughs> sexy girl or something like that. And I was like 12. And they were like, you're 30. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, how did they know that he was older? Yeah, well, I knew that they were older because I think I told you one time I had um, I was talking to somebody on AIM and then they were like, oh, you should call me. And I like called them and it was like an old man. And I was like, I'm going to go. I didn't know how to find people I didn't know. How do you, you go do, in chat yeah, rooms? How do you do that? You go in chat rooms. There's chat rooms that are about cer- oh, certain topics. Yeah, you go in chat right. rooms. I would. That I was scared. I wasn't. I didn't do that. I was. Told I was not a good to talk kid. To people on the internet. You know what? I don't like the judgment. I was a good Christian kid. I was. I didn't do anything kid. wrong. I never wanted to get in trouble. <laughs> no. I just like typed up my buddy info every day, like just in different fonts and like different colors, and that's Wait, what, what I did. What do you mean, buddy info? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? What do I? What do you mean? What do I mean? What do you mean? I'm telling you, they had very different aim experiences. <laughs> your buddy info is when. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, like your away message. It was called buddy info. So you you would. Oh, it it's was like, called buddy info, but I just called it away message. Sorry, yeah, you, you could type unlocked. out, and it was like you could do like different fonts, and like you could yeah, do yeah. different colors, and it was like most people would like write like song lyrics, and it was like whenever. You, you were, were away. I guess it was when you were away. I don't. I don't know though. <laughs> Hold on, I'm about to age us even more. It was more called real quick. Buddy Info. Hold I on, just I that's want... all I know. So it was like your person. It was a bio. Yeah. Before bio was called bio, it was called Buddy Info on huh. AIM, and so you could click on that person's name, and they would have their like bio. Yo, you're right. I'm now remembering. Away this. message was different. Away message when you would yeah. when you would message someone and they were not on the computer. And their away message was sent. Yes. That's different than buddy info. Yeah. Buddy info is your bio. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm remembering this now. My bad. Hold on. I could never for the goddamn life of me figure out how to personalize my MySpace page. Oh, I was a coding genius. You had to be a goddamn coder. No, 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 no. You go to, you would, you would go to specific websites that were for layouts. Yeah. I couldn't do it for the life of me. My Uh, friend was doing it and she wouldn't show me. I was homeschooled. I literally figured it out. I had no like repertoire for any of this. You just went online and went like, like picked, uh, there was like specific websites. I know there's like one that everyone used to use, but it was like called layout something. And you'd go on there and you could, you could scroll through. Different layouts My for friends your... would purposely not tell me so that I would look dumb. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. Are they your, your sister? She didn't do it. She didn't care. But like my friends would go on and they'd be all like cool text and weird colors and fun music playing. Yeah. I'd be like, how'd you do this? And like. <sighs> I think it was called like, like layout.com. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I just looked it up. It's called MySpace Layouts. Well, no one fucking taught me this shit. How was I supposed to learn? I was also homeschooled, but didn't learn how to read till I was 12 years old. I was struggling. <laughs> I don't know how I was supposed to get there. We feel oh bad God. for you. And now I'm a social media influencer. Yeah, and now you make money that, than, more money than all of us combined. Take that fucking MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> you figured I'm it out. It just took a second. You found a goddamn loophole. <laughs> I said, I'll just film myself. No coding needed. <laughs> Love it. I don't have to read again. Yeah. <laughs> you read so well. Can I just thank you? You read oh oh just hold just hold it. This is a handshake. <laughs> you read so well. Thank you very much. Proud of you. I think that's gonna be at the end of whatever yeah, the Dad fuck this was. I'm looking up layouts. Oh. I wanted to find that. <laughs> I wanted gonna to find find We're gonna MySpace all redo our MySpaces and right show now. It to me. <laughs> Ever skies. If MySpace takes off again, can someone please teach me how to do my page? Oh my god, I remember Ever Skies. I don't remember any of this. All right. We're going to be done. Thank you for listening. Emily, we apologize for the difference in volume. Good luck. And for the, all the editing you're going to have to do. We love you. Um, for everyone else, we love you as well. Please subscribe to my podcast channel. Um, and that's the end of this. See you next time. Okay. 
And say bye to Devin. You won't see her for three months. Bye. And then say bye to my girlfriend. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!